All right, hello everyone. Today is June the 7th, 2023, and in this episode I'm going to be reviewing the price action on multiple asset classes on the futures market. So we're going to go through some of the index futures, um, a little bit of Forex, uh, commodities futures, and um, the dollar index. So this overview is basically just my way of video journaling uh, price action using ICT concepts. So let's get started. Uh, I'm not going to be delving into every little aspect of price today. Um, and as a quick disclaimer, bear in mind this is not financial advice. I'm not soliciting you to purchase or sell securities. I'm not a financial advisor. Trade at your own risk. Okay. Um, so we remember that when we're trading ICT concepts, we don't. Um, we believe that the the new financial day starts at uh, midnight New York local time or midnight Eastern Standard Time. So we don't look at Wellington or at resettlement as our new opening day, and we're expecting certain times of the day to manipulate, meaning move in the opposite direction. And then we're also looking for things like market profile, so seek and destroy profile, bullish or bearish trending day profile, for example. So let's get a quick narrative on the ES. So we open up the day at, um, at 42.94. We uh, traded in a, in a tight range coming into Frankfurt. Frankfurt on the 15 minute chart. I'm probably just going to stick with the 15 minute chart because we're going to go through multiple uh, multiple products. So 15 minute chart, Frankfurt Open had a small uh, small manipulation to the upside and then as we see as we traded in through the Frankfurt session uh, it was pretty much just straight straight down. London Open again small manipulation to the upside. Uh, we had a small fair value gap form here and price uh, ended up pairing the high at 89, uh, 89.75 and then we ended up getting our London session low on the four o'clock hour and our low was at uh, 81.50. At that point we ended up trading back up above the midnight high, uh, sorry the, the midnight open so we can see that our, our Frankfurt London session was uh, manipulation into, into the morning um, equities, the news release at 8.30 didn't really give us much uh, action. We, we traded back into this fair value gap here and the, the, uh, the real action came on equities open. So equities open traded back up to our weekly volume imbalance that we ended up um, again touching and it looks like price is trying to balance that out. Equities open also gave you a nice short entry with some confluence. So number one, we had a full fill of this imbalance here to the left that was formed on uh, June the 5th. And we ended up fully filling that and had you entered at the consequent encroachment or entered at um, entered at the full fair value gap fill. You could have even, it, in, it even ended up trading to the order block up above, so the rejection block. So the, the order block up above ended up trading into the mean threshold of that order block. And so you could have even gotten a trade up at the mean threshold of this order block. It was also up at uh, trading above that 4,300 big figure. So that was pretty much your big trade of the day. Um, you had a couple, you had basically two narrative trades, I would say, um, coming into coming into the ES today. So this looks like a seek and destroy profile coming into the morning session and then transitioning just to a, a bearish profile. So we see our seek and destroy where we come down, we, we purge some sell side liquidity, we're below multiple lows, come back up, we purge buy side liquidity. So uh, overnight session, Globex session was a seek and destroy profile and then equities was a Judas swing on the equities open and then into a bearish profile um, throughout the day. So that was basically your opportunities. Um, overnight session was mostly short into the midpoint here at London and then we ended up sweeping that London low uh, during the trading day today. So let's take a look at the Dow. The Dow was um, the Dow did give you again that opportunity when we saw in the our real our clean opportunity in the Dow 
was um, or in the YM, the, the Dow futures, uh, was really overnight. So we we opened up at um, thirty three. I'll turn on the price signal. So we ended up opening at thirty uh, six thirty three. We traded down into one hour into London's, similar with the ES, and then our low, we came down and we repriced, we re-delivered this fair value gap here to the left, and as we see, we came back, we offered it on sell side, and we offered it on uh, back on buy side, and then left the fair value gap, so we fully rebalanced, we re-delivered, and then rebalanced, re-deliver, rebalance, which is a big concept, y'all, re-delivery and rebalance, they're not the same thing. As we come back, we offer it on the sell side, and then we offer it again on the buy side, and we trade out of it. So your overnight trade on the Dow, you could have gotten in. Let's see if London Open really gave you. London Open did not give you a good manipulation to get in short. Uh, Frankfurt Open, kind of. Really, any point here, you could have just sold short on a market order, um, and this fair value gap was fairly visible. So. Uh, Decent overnight short here on the Dow, or you could have gone long on the Dow, uh, betting betting on this fair value gap, and especially as you saw it get redelivered and then rebalanced, and then it sort of traded into uh, not a not a not a great model 2022. But as we ended up trading above over that 588, we had a shift in market structure. We see, um, let's see here. This kind of looks like an, an immediate rebalance to me. So right there on the red box. So we end up meet immediate, uh, getting an immediate rebalance, which was our signal to go higher. And we ended up, you know, reasonable target could have been above here, above this buy side liquidity. Uh, and you would, have, you would have ended up hitting that. And that was, that was kind of your trade on the Dow today. I'm just breezing through this. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on covering multiple things, so I don't want to... Um, I don't want to get too in depth on any one. So we see a similar profile on the Nasdaq. We see that we manipulated down during the London session, came came back up and manipulated up on equities open and then straight down. So a couple of different opportunities here on the Nasdaq. If you wanted to get in on the short leg, first off, you could have seen that as we come into the New York Open. Um, we were trading below it and it did not want to get back up into a premium. And then let's see if Frankfurt Open gave you an opportunity. Not really. London opportunity. London Open was a an institutional order flow entry drill right here. So you could have gotten short at 70.50 and then aimed down somewhere down here. I'm sure you would have seen a little bit more on the five minute chart, but your London Open did give you a IOFED entry. And then let's see if you could have gotten in on the long side. 15 minute structure wasn't broken really all the way up until here. In terms of getting in lower, I don't immediately see it. We do have a, a breakaway gap here that could have gotten you long. And then what did price target? Yeah, so our, our equities open, again, targeted. Did we fully fill it? We did not fully fill it. So we just came up to this order block here, traded literally right at the at that uh, order block, open, top, ticked it, uh, didn't fully rebalance this gap. We, let me see, yeah, we did not. So we re-delivered up into this fair value gap, but we didn't fully rebalance it because it didn't get all the way up to the top, all the way up to a full fill, but like a 75% fill blocked by that order block there. And then it was a bearish profile throughout the day. So just straight down. Um, on the 15 minute chart, I'm not seeing any other real opportunity to get in. You really needed to get in on this equities open swing. And um, this was a good example, I think, of a, of a bearish profile in the day, right? So we manipulate in London, we manipulate in the equities open and then it's straight down so um, the good like a very clean sort of bearish profile on the Nasdaq I'm not going to talk about Nikkei futures um, Russell 2000 kind of exact opposite of um, kind of exact opposite of our Nasdaq situation so 
the Russell ended up manipulating to the downside and forming a, a, a bullish market maker profile. So we manipulated during the London session, and then it was straight up during the New York session. Um, I was actually short in the overnight session on my uh, evaluation accounts, and then I wasn't really trading it during the actual session today. So um, what I saw here when I was trading this was this was on a five minute chart this was an immediate rebalance Frankfurt open manipulated a little bit higher and then London open finally finished the move now the difficulty I think with the Russell 2000 today was that we were aiming for this we were drawing in to this fair, fair value gap over here but as you can see we never really traded into it we, we traded up to the high and then we didn't we didn't redeliver it so what does that mean? We didn't we didn't actually even wick back into the fair value gap, but we drew to it. And then price gave you over an hour, plenty of time to exit if you were short in the London session. And then from there, I mean, it was pretty much off to the races. The only other thing is if you're looking at 715, we traded down into this fair value gap. So this was a model 2022. Uh, we broke some structure here, a 15 minute model 2022. So it was a uh, on a you know decently high time frame so bullish model 2022 as we traded back above the opening price at New York open midnight so we ended up pairing the pairing the losses and the day looked like it was going to be a um, potentially a bullish market maker profile this was a model 22 and then we traded down into this fair value gap and then it was not quite filled I think it was one tick off. Yeah, one tick off from a fill, so we left it open by one tick, and then it was off to the races from there. So if you did have an opportunity if you were trading in the overnight session. Um, 8.30 news release didn't really give it to you, and then there's a little bit of manipulation just before the equities open, and then equities open obviously was the bulk of the move today on the Russell 2000. Your futures, um, similar story. Let me just take a quick breather these daily profiles really allow you to get a bigger picture and so you really the big the most important thing is that you need to ignore sort of your daily what your chart what your trading view or what your platform is telling you what the day looks like because that's not really what the financial day looks like it starts at New York midnight so that's really what your you need to imagine a daily candle that starts from uh, right here past the dashed line. So you can understand that our daily range was down and up and then back down on Euro futures. So we, it ended up being a consolidation profile day. But that's basically what you need to understand is that your financial day opens at New York midnight. It doesn't open up at Wellington. It doesn't open up at Tokyo. It opens up at New York midnight. So this is really the start of your daily candle is uh, New York op New York open midnight. Let's go down to a 15 minute time frame on the Euro futures. So a very similar story to our index futures with the Euro futures. We ended up manipulating at midnight. We actually made our low. So this is interesting and you do see this quite a bit with, uh, he talks about this in his Forex series. Um, our London low on the open was actually our low of the day. And he talks about how that, that often is the case. You're often going to get your high or low of the day um, if you're in a bearish, bullish day, like basically the opposite day. You're going to get your your low, your swing point, opposite swing point during the London Open. So we saw that today. And so that was, uh, that was a good signal there. Some good ICT knowledge. Um, London ended up trading into this series of order blocks here. Uh, and that's that's where we formed our low. So, price did not want to get past this this thick range. This was a well balanced range. So, this range over here that I I'm going to highlight in yellow, you see lots of back and forth efficient price delivery. So there's no there was no real need for price to go down any lower, and and sure enough it didn't. So came down to the this series of order blocks here that was efficiently delivered. Uh, bounces off the London Open and then uh, off to the races. In terms of trades for the day on the 15 minute chart, I think getting in at the London Low, uh, getting in on London Open may have been difficult unless you were looking at this 
balanced range over here. So it's definitely possible. In terms of getting the initial short, um, just after the midnight open, we traded up into this order block here. Could have shorted on that. Um, see if Frankfurt Open give you, gave you anything. Frankfurt Open traded up to the mean threshold of this order block. So there were a couple opportunities to get the uh, to get the overnight short prior to the move up. Um, I would say that right after the midnight open, this trading up into this order block, if you would have bet on the mean threshold of this order block and then coming down, that was a pretty a, a decent bet, right? So trading up throughout the day, let's see what we did on our equities open. So at 8.30, which is our first time that we look at, we ended up filling this volume imbalance and bouncing off of it. Equities open ended up taking us to our high of the day. It turned out to be a Judas swing. And then what do we see here? So similar story on Euro futures that we've seen everywhere else. Number one, we're coming in and we're rebalancing a fair value gap here from earlier. So we ended up trading up into that. But in addition to that, you'll notice that we ended up taking out uh, long-term stops. So we ended up running this longer-term high. So kind of a dual confluence there that that was a good spot that the Euro futures were going to turn. So we took out took out buy stops. We were also rebalancing. We didn't rebalance it. We redelivered it. We repriced into it. Didn't redeliver it. We repriced into the CE of this uh, fair value gap here to the left. But we were also taking out at the same time buy stops. And so in terms of your opportunities to get long for this equities open rally, I would say we this would have been kind of difficult to see on the 15 minute chart I'm not going to go lower for today um, but we did trade into this volume imbalance here and that was at a, was at a key time yes it was it was at 830 news release so 830 news release which is a key time we trade down into a volume imbalance and that you know that's a decent that's a decent long signal there you could have gotten in long in terms of getting short are we at a key time? Yes, we're just after the equities open, so we're expecting manipulation on equities open or just after equities open. We know that that can happen, so we're we're expecting it. We're trading above buy stops. We're trading into a prior um, a prior imbalance. So you could have definitely used ICT logic to get short here, and I think that was that was a, a big trade of the day. In addition to that, if we're looking. Um, if we're looking at this profile, it would have been difficult to see until after the Judas swing on equities open. But this is a consolidation day profile, or um, how, how do I say this? It? It's like uh, it's a Doji candle or consolidation day because we trade down, we trade up, we trade back, basically right to the open, right, right to the open price. So consolidation day profile on the Euro futures. I think we're going to see a similar story on the pound futures. I'm not going to review the pound futures except to say um, on the hourly chart, so now we're up at a one hour, on my Apex account I was getting long pound futures right around here and, and the reason that I did that is because I could see that we were basically forming a model 2022. So very similar story on the pound futures. Uh, overnight, I saw that we had some imbalance here that we needed to go and trade into, which we did. We still haven't finished the business up here, by the way. We've got an order block up here that could still draw a price. Um, we haven't fully rebalanced the fair value gap, haven't gone into these orders that are sitting up at this order block. So, you know, the, the pound futures might actually want to go up tomorrow. We'll see. And the reason I say that again is because we, we've got unfinished business up there. Yen futures, um, there was a higher time frame, uh, let's see, four, four hour fair value gap that we ended up trading into. Daily uh, profile Judas swing on the US equities open and then straight down. Um, so overnight session was down and then equities open. We ended up popping up and we knocked out um, we see all these equal highs here on the yen futures. We just pop right up above them and then pop straight back down. So this is kind of like a seek and destroy profile going into a bearish profile. 
because we know we take we purge the sell side liquidity, we purge the buy side liquidity, and then we trade down. Gold was uh, a nice seek and destroy. Um, really interesting stuff on the gold chart today. So take a look at gold and um, as we come into the new financial day we ended up leaving the sell stops in in the overnight session or we get our London low and we um, we actually form a little model 22 here and the reason this is a model 22 is we break structure we form a fair value gap we trade back into the fair value gap and then we on equities open it was a key time of the day obviously we come out we knock the buy stops and then straight down on gold. So model 22, come in, purge the buy side liquidity, and then bear us for the remainder of the day. We purge the sell side liquidity. A um, couple of interesting things to note here. We were, we were doing more than just purging liquidity on gold here. There was multiple signs that gold was going to form this sort of um, purge and revert or seek and destroy profile. So number one, we see that on our hourly chart, our equities open traded into an imbalance. So that was going to be a draw on liquidity, this imbalance over here. And then on our 15 minute chart, we can see this long imbalance that we had not um, we had not priced back into or we had not re-delivered. We still haven't rebalanced it, by the way, because we offered it on the buy side. We offered it on the sell side. We need to offer it back on the buy side. So I'm kind of at this point, I'm expecting gold probably to, to rally back up to at least um, 1971 and just refill, basically re-deliver this, uh, rebalance this gap here. So we, we, re, um, we haven't offered it back again on the sell side. So I expect us to at least trade to 1970 on gold. So I'm maybe, I don't think that gold is going to end up making a new low. It's possible gold could come down, make a new low. So come in, make a new low, and then trade back up to rebalance this fair value gap that I highlighted on the left. Um, but beautiful setup today. I mean, just a really beautiful profile on gold. Um, which is a good reminder that you don't need to trade index futures to make to make a living. There's a lot of different products out there, and some of them are going to give you a more beautiful profile uh, than another. So nice seek and destroy profile here on the gold futures. Let's take a look at copper. Um, copper so copper trade we right after the New York open trade up a little bit we come in we make our low uh, just before London so in the Frankfurt session make our low in the Frankfurt session and then as London open it uh, was pretty obvious that that um, copper wanted to make a nice move higher why do I say that was obvious because so copper ended up trading into this um, I'm sure that's a balanced price range on a, on a lower time frame, but we'll call it an order block. Um, a nice thick order block mean threshold. We ended up uh, wicking down towards the lower half of it, but we just bodied right at the consequent encroachment at a key time of the day, just before London. And then as London opened, we see they tried to give us a little bit of manipulation, but it, it, uh, when you see very weak manipulation like this, there's a good chance that we're just going to have a big impulse move. We did, and then in the overnight session to, uh, towards London, just beautiful move on copper, just a huge, uh, very, very attractive move. We ended up making our London high, and that was our high of the day. So London high. And actually, as far as ICT's concepts goes, London was the range of the day on copper futures. So interesting tidbit there. Um, coming into equities open, we see a very similar sort of profile as we've seen in the other products. Copper comes in on the equities open and ends up re-delivering and then rebalancing a fair value gap. So you definitely could have gotten short here. This was a 15-minute model 22. As we break structure, we have a fair value gap at uh, in a premium. Trade back up into that fair, fair value gap on equities open, and then it's straight back down. And we ended up taking out some trailing stops. Um, so yeah, so I mean, beautiful move in the London session. I mean, big big move on copper futures uh, during the London session. 
which goes to show, I mean, you don't need to suffer if ES, listen, if, you're, if your index futures are not moving and you want to make money, I mean, guys, these profiles work. The concepts work. It doesn't matter what product it is. Uh, I would stay away from crypto, but I mean, look at look, look at copper. I mean, beautiful move on copper. Big, big, beautiful move. Clean, impulsive move. You know, you didn't need to be suffering in an index future. You know, for a couple of handles when copper is just bang, right? You're on the right side of this copper move. That's big money. That's big money. So, silver, very similar profile to gold, but and copper, obviously, but. Um, even bigger impulse move, uh, big, big Judas swing in silver. Let's take a look at our hourly chart. Yeah, so silver really wanted to come in and take out these stops, longer term stops up here. And sure enough, we did uh, up around, what is this, 24.130. We ended up uh, equities open, just coming, rating these, sweeping these stops, and then straight back down. So you could have been in here on the long, aim for, aim for these stops. You could have been in on the short, um, basically betting that this was going to be a uh, purge and revert, which it was. Or you could have been in on both sides uh, with two accounts or with with uh, limit orders, basically. So you limit in on the long, straight into a twice the size, a limit short. So purge and revert here on, on silver. Big, big move in silver. Um, and again, we make our low in the London session, and we ended up coming back, and we wanted to attack that London low all the way back. So London low, big impulse move, leaving displacement, leaving a fair value gap, doesn't even bother to trade, trade back into it, just straight down. And we end up coming all the way back and getting near this London low here. So very big move on silver today. Uh, crude oil. So crude oil was a beautiful uh, bullish profile today, and I'm on the hourly chart. And I traded a little bit of crude oil today. So we ended up forming a model 2022 on on the hourly time frame. So we we poke above uh, these stops here at 7201, highlighting with the cursor. So we poke above it yesterday, Tuesday, and. That is, it's not a great shift in market structure, but it, but it's there. And then we trade back into this fair value gap. Our, our London low actually re-delivers this fair value gap almost to the tick, almost to the tick. And then we end up uh, just ripping through the midnight open high, ripping all the way up into this fair value gap here on the left. Uh, so big, clean move on crude oil today. And again, I mean. You know, we don't have a lot of guys. Everybody wants to trade NQ, and NQ is always moving, and blah, blah, blah. Guys, I mean, crude oil, look at this clean moves, you know. I mean, the only objective in this game is not to uh, – the only objective is to make money. You're not worried about what other people are thinking. So, you know, even if all the hotness on YouTube is trading NQ – who gives a fuck? If you make all your money in copper futures, you make $20,000 in copper futures, who gives a fuck if NQ did this or did that? I mean, who cares, right? If fucking, if crude oil is making a beautiful, clean setup, I mean, just a beautiful model 2022 on the on the 15-minute time frame, right? We end up breaking structure. We trade back into a fair value gap. It's also a key time of the day. It's in the London session. Trade back towards... You'll oftentimes find, guys, that prior to these big impulsive moves, it's going to be a tiny order block like this. It comes back, break-even principle, all these sell orders, they just they start the, the spring. You're going to find these tiny little order blocks are oftentimes uh, great signatures for another big displacement. Beautiful move on crude oil. And so, guys, uh, if, if, if you see that the cleaner moves are are in a product that's not in queue. Who gives a fuck what NQ is doing, guys? I mean, look at copper. Look at silver. Look at crude oil. These products had beautiful, beautiful moves. So you're on your funded accounts. You're on your demo your demo accounts. Um, I would say, you know, look at things that are not just the index futures. Natural gas. Um, I haven't actually marked out natural gas. But it did make a big move today.
trades around our morning open. We end up pairing the lows uh, at the end of uh, in the pre-market session, an hour after ICT's London kill zone ends. We end up not being able to trade below these equal lows, and then just big displacement up. There was actually on um, natural gas today. We see we come down, we trade back into this volume imbalance, and it acts. X is beautiful support, so we trade into this order block, which is also this volume imbalance, and just a beautiful reaction off of that. I mean, this is a very low draw. If you bet on this volume imbalance here, filling, which it did, it re-delivered, and then re-delivered, rebalanced, re-delivered, rebalanced. If you had a limit long here on natural gas futures, just a, uh, a beautiful no drawdown, low drawdown sort of trade. So, uh, sorry, mean threshold of this order block that I'm highlighting into a volume imbalance and basically you took no heat on the trade and it was just straight back up to this opposing order block. So that would have been a nice trade there on natural gas. Finally the bonds. Bonds were just killed today. This is the 10 year future, 10 year note futures. Um, we opened up at midnight and it was just a bearish profile on the day. Any opportunities to get in on this big bond move Let's take a look at uh, Frankfurt. So Frankfurt's going to be 2, 2 a.m. Frankfurt manipulates a little bit into this order block. That would have been very difficult to see. London open ends up, uh, this, you know, the bonds are sometimes, the candles, they look a little different. They're flatter because they're, they're not denominated the same way. They're denominated in 30 seconds. But, um, we see that actually what is that right there on London Open that's a um, that's an order block and it's also an institutional order flow entry drill so we end up poking above this is on London Open and we end up poking up into this little structure here into this fair value gap and if you would have gotten short here on London Open and frankly uh, you know you're, if you were watching the this bond move today it just used every mitigation block couldn't get above it and ended up making a big sweep lower. So that was on the 10-year uh, futures. And then finally, dollar index, seek and, seek and destroy profile all the way today. Um, overnight session, we pop up, we purge some buy side. Big move down in the dollar index. We purge uh, sell side, and then we come back up, and we end up going to end up closing like right at the New York Open. So seek and destroy profile on the dollar index today. And we end up rebalancing. What's this hourly fair value gap? Trade down, redeliver, rebalance, and then this fair value gap that was left, redeliver, rebalance, and it looks like we're going to end up just closing the dollar index right at that New York open. So this was a rundown of your different products for June the seventh, twenty twenty-three. I hope you have a good day.